Hello, folks. Welcome, Hello back. folks. Welcome back. And I hope everyone, just like me, drinking out of my old-fashioned tankard in celebration and of the old-timey ways of... Oh, I hope everyone had a happy Christopher Columbus Day. Cheers, everyone. Extra stiff. It was all just on top. Mm. No, it was all just on top. And it's only comfort floats and stuff. As you can tell by the previous video, a little thing, it was Columbus Day, yes. I always have to play the national anthem. Always. Should respect the flag, um, even though he probably wasn't the founder. He was correct to it. Remember, um, I think, depending who you and I ask, either the agents came across the land bridge in Alaska. The Vikings showed up. I don't know, but that was Canada, though. Maybe northern Maine. Then definitely Amerigo Vespucci showed up, the Italian. Uh, hence the name America. After Amerigo Vespucci. It's always nice to remember those days. At one time, everyone had off those days. I don't know. All the stuff about being connected. I heard about Facebook. <laughs> Facebook crashing. And like people were sent into like a tizzy. I don't even know what happened. I literally go on Facebook to... Tell the women friends I know to post bikini pics. So yes, bikini pics I'm looking for. Post goofy videos and play games. Other than that, I honestly have no clue what else Facebook's used for. Remember, I grew up in a time when Facebook was actually just used primarily by college girls to post their puking pictures. So it took me a long time to get used to that. But you know what? I would like to thank some connectivity. Uh, let's see, I have a whole bunch of thank yous to give out. Hard left of Teddy Hart. Thank you, sir. You were there. You supported me, at least, during some show. You, sir, you always win twice. That's six count.
Dark Seed. Yep, yeah, you and I were probably the only two people besides the next person that was on the one channel um, to watch that. I don't know. The wrestling was, was okay. It was mad to, to good. The announcers killed it, though. The announcers just, they brought it down a level. But you know what? You sir would never bring anything down. Because you're a master. The air guitar. troll uh, you sir are going probably not for uh, this I don't know I might fit you on the card somehow oh yeah I can fit you on the card right I know I'm gonna have to add someone to the card you sir are out of here you're off to the Daytona Beach Bone Fight League Titties ass hands. <laughs> Just crawl out of here. <laughs> Joe Mama. Joe Mama always went by dirty pen. Okay, this is where this has to be either a brother and sister combination, husband wife combination, or brother girlfriend combination. Victoria Kuman! You miss are a member of the El Generico band. Human ride. Holy shit. Third Falcon, 
Like me, you know that Jordan has a back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Peppy Smoke, you're that luchador on a forklift. And Ritz, you're a part of Mundo Madness. And with that, those are all the thank yous I have to give out. I better keep that because that's going to take a while to process. It has been a while since I've done a review video. Um, oh. Dun, 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 Major announcement. Yeah. Impact Wrestling's being bitchy. Um, it seems Impact Wrestling, WWE, and AEW have all purchased the $5 million copyright software protection that does not allow me to, does not allow me to pass on the sounds that, that you guys can hear, unlike their daily TV show. So unfortunately, I've had to, been forced to make an exec, executive decision. I'm not a big fan of executive decisions. It's generally, I always tend to make the wrong executive decision. But we'll see how this goes. And I hate, like, with the ex with the exception of Lucha, with um, with the exception of uh, Triple A, whose schedule I will eventually figure out, because they just had Immortals of Wrestling, Mortal Heroes of Wrestling. And I had no clue about it. Um, I was very ill prepared. I had I was so tunnel vision onto this women's show. I had no clue about it. Um, with the exception of AAA, I hate to do it, guys. Um, any wrestling show over three hours now, like three hours continuous, like SmackDown, AEW, Dynamite. AEW Rampage. If I catch Ring of Honor, um, some other minor shows. If it's a minor, if it's a minor promotions, like if it's, I can't do New Japan because one they're up to way too late. Um, but yeah, Bound for Glory. Unless it's one of their big pay-per-views, like if it's like one of the WWE Big Four, 
I'll do a live watch along, but anything else, I mean, the big companies have done it to me, and they've probably done it to a bunch of other smaller people like me. People probably got out of it because they realized very quickly what they would do, but I think for the most part, everything is going to be a review nowadays. Um, I will do live streams for Impact because the TV shows are a little bit different. I think TV regulations are, are kind of wonky still because there's still a break as long as I'm talking enough. I haven't had a problem with the TV shows unless I like show like, unless they have like Wrestle House, which is amazing. Bound for Glory, I'm, I'm, again, that's, that's kind of one of the big ones. I'll do that probably not the monthly one so much. Um, I'll probably sit down and do a review of it the next day. But again, YouTube and these big companies not showing their product and trying to, I'm trying to promote their product and it's just, it's just not happening. Um, instead of videos being canceled all the time or being taken off because of copyright laws in this country, unlike Mexico, <laughs> which is a whole other story. Triple Mania is a riot to deal with. Um, yeah, for the most part, it's going to be reviews. Triple Mania, um, always with um, AAA Wrestling. Whenever I know there's a big show and I can plan for it, super watch party. Trust me. Set up just like I do for Triple Mania. Other shows, not so much. I will try to do a lot of live stuff. I'll try to do as much as I can. It all depends when they show up here. Again, you know, I sell there's the door of wrestling, all the stuff I've been to. I think if that's a decent enough background. Yeah, it's books. I don't know. I have to figure stuff out. Friday, I have a big interview too, so. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That's the major announcement. I'm going to be doing less pay per view big event live streams. Or if I do, I have to. I, I might have to figure out the setup a little bit. I might move the microphone around. See if it's a little bit less noise. Because I can have it as background noise. But I guess when they have the software, they can like clearly distinct. Even shockingly, Mickey James' very soft voice. Their very voluptuous body. Um, yeah. So, there's some things that have to be changed, I guess. Eventually, I don't know. You have to fiddle with these copyright laws a lot. It's becoming, I don't know, a pain. And again, if you're curious, this is my St. Anselm's flagon that I have that I graduated from. Yes. So I think that's something very similar that, of course, Christopher Columbus would have used. Okay, enough about this junk. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And I'll tell you what. I was pleasantly surprised. I haven't watched Raw in a while, mainly because I've been working. Um, yeah, because last, last Monday I closed. I think the previous Monday I closed too. So I couldn't get to watching Monday Night Raw. And you just get two backed up during the week. I'll tell you what. I'm shocked. People who think that Monday Night Raw is bad, I don't know. When Vin, This is that weird thing. When Vince feels that he's backed into a corner, all of a sudden he makes good stuff. When there's no competition, it's that old, it's that horrible phrase, competition really drives you to do stuff. So it seems like with AEW actually competing with the WWE, we're seeing... What I think is a superior product in Raw. Um, the women's division, you can say whatever about. Impact Impact still, I think, treats their women the best. Yeah, even with the pay-per-view, they at least gave them, they, they gave them the time. I mean, I will give credit where credit's due. They, I think everyone had like at least a 15-minute match. Just at the... Announcers were so uninspiring. And Mickey James is so good in the ring, but it doesn't translate over. It's it's just I don't know I don't get it. It's just weird. Uh, so let's start off Monday Night Raw. 
Drew intros the shows, tells you what to expect. That's really good. Biggie comes out, says, wait, you want my belt? <laughs> no, my friend. And then the Usos say, yeah, we only have one more week left where we get to beat up suckers like you. So that was pretty good. And that's a super kick party! Start things. Soon the Bucks are gonna, like, make me pay them for using super kick party! I don't know. We'll see. Uh, first match of the night, Xavier Woods versus Ricochet. Oh, wow. This is honestly how Raw should always start off. You have a good introduction of what's going to happen. You know what your main, you know what your main event's going to be you're like. Usos for his Drew McIntyre and Big E? I can see that. You have Xavier Woods, the King of the Ring tournament? I want to see that. You have the Queen, Queen of the Ring matches? I... It, it makes you vested as a wrestling fan. It's like, okay, this is not going to be a garbage show. They're not going to have, like, random stuff on. I like that. Again, Xavier Woods for, for the Ricochet is so good. Uh, very fast-paced. Good kind of wrestling. Um, Xavier Woods is a big drop kick. They were trading quick pins in the beginning. They jockey a little bit on the top rope. Again, not so much cooperating by trading blows, trying to get the right position. Ricochet, Superplex City, baby! I like doing that. Uh, Woods can fly too. He goes off the top rope. That's fun. That was a nice judo throw. Whenever I see legitimate MMA moves, um, I'll tell you what, it, it just... When I, whenever I see legitimate jiu-jitsu, judo, collegiate-style wrestling stuff, man, it just brings legitimacy to the sport. It's like, yeah, especially when it's sold right. Like, I know the one judo throw they do, um, it's hard to, I, I honestly forget what it's called in judo. They have so, so weird. It's, oh, Sonogari! No, it's not an oh, Sonogari. Um, I know the Yurinagi they call in wrestling is not a Yurinagi uh, in judo. Yurinagi in judo is almost like a Saito suplex. The Yurinagi, uh, that's just, I don't know what that is. Um, Osorogato, Os Osorogato, um, Sasai, there's, they all have very specific names in judos, but what it is, you pick a person up in a fireman's carry, have them on your shoulder, and literally just do a roll, it's kind of like a roll through burning hammer, but you really never let like, go, you never drop the guy, so the guy falls flat on his back. And you, you kind of roll on him. Old school judo move. I saw that. I'm like, yes. That looks absolutely awesome. Again, you start putting, you start pulling together in some of those elements from other mixed martial arts. And all of a sudden, WWE is going to get another little branch of their audience saying, oh, yeah. And judo, even, in, even in judo, it's like, Ugh. you lose your breath. And it's a great, and again, you score by Epon. And judo is an automatic win. But the guy goes down here on the mat. Like, yeah. The guy still knows he, he got e well, to make it a verb, I guess. Epon. But I don't know what the proper terminology in judo is besides epon. I, I know very little. Oh, Sorogari! Sasai. Um, Urnagi. I know how to do some of them. I just don't know what their names are. And there's, like, everything has its own name. Um, Society to Osorogati. Um, and other things. I'm not going to bore you with that stuff. But yeah, it's great to see that. Uh, Ricochet, uh, Xavier goes out of the ring, rolls out. He, he looked like he was in pain. That's good. When you see a legit, when you see a legit, you don't move. It actually looks like he's actually hurt. That's good. Add some legitimacy. Even though it's probably kayfabe and they probably rehearsed it a hundred times. But still. Ricochet, he flies over the post. I have no idea how he clears the post. That's some distance. Cause that's... So you have the turnbuckle. And say the turnbuckle is say five and a half. Five, five and a half foot tall for the top turnbuckle. The post comes up a little bit more. Because it's a support structure. So you're talking about five and a half feet, six foot you have to clear. Plus that additional like foot, nine inch foot gap. So yeah, I have no idea how, you, how humans do that. 
because I can't. But, um, <laughs> probably my own fault, but he flies over the post. He does a launching shoulder tackle once. Again, the second time though, Xavier would sidesteps up, sends him to the thing. Xavier goes, Woods goes to the top rope, the walking elbow drop. Amazing match. Xavier Woods wins. We might see this proclamation of King Woods happen. I don't know. I haven't. I'm not. I don't think it's going to be King. I doubt it's going to be King Balor. I don't know. Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor. Finn should win that. Xavier Woods versus Jinder Mahal. Oh, I don't know. In Saudi Arabia. They might put that on Jinder. That's weird. But yeah, whatever. This, folks, this was a surf and turf match, though. Then we had uh, Riddle and Orange backstage. Orange just chilling out, listening to this music, waiting for, I guess, a producer to talk to him. Um, yeah, whatever Riddle says, I don't care. He should never mention Snakeskin Speedos, though. Then we have Ali and Mansoor taking on the Hurt Business of Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Again, they broke up the Hurt Business way too soon. They realized that they had magic in the bottle and said, we have to get them back together. And like the announcer, the one announcer said, I do want to see what, what drove them, what made them want to come back together. Shelton, he goes right after Mansoor, who's on the ringside, <laughs> who's outside. And um, then he goes right after Ali. Um... Then this was a fast match. Cedric Alexander comes in, starts beating up Ali. Hits a Michinoku driver. That's it. One, two, three. Um, very fast paced. It was good though. I mean, the fact that Ali and Mansoor. The reason why they did this at the end said, "Uh oh, there's some dissension between Ali and Mansoor." Indeed, and then you learn that. Uh, Mustafar Ali is from Pakistan and Ali and Mansur is from Saudi Arabia. Ooh, Mansur beats, puts Ali in its place. A little nationalism there. I don't know, it was, a, it was a fun enough match. I do like the angle. Solid cheeseburger match. Okay, let's see here. Oh, let's, yeah, I can do this in seven minutes, six minutes, uh, five minutes and 30 seconds. Um, next match, we have Shannon Baszler and Dana Brooke. This whole little thing about how Shannon's been breaking people's arms. Not the Pentagon Jr. way, but just in, in her own way, which I do like. Um, she's doing it a little bit differently, which is always good to see. Um, Shannon goes right after Dana, and I didn't realize whenever Dana Brooke tans, she has to wear a full body swimsuit. I real because I, I think in looking, that and um, Dana has has to has to do be a little more conscientious of what she's wearing. Dana Brooke is an absolutely gorgeous woman. Oh my goodness, if Dana Brooke was my girlfriend, one she she'd be my wife soon, and two she'd have kids soon. Cause yeah, that's yeah. She's miss worth. She's miss. She's worth missing work for, in the bedroom. But um. Again, I would just tell Dana just just wear short skirts and just hang on my arm and wear a bikini. That's all. I'd be happy. Um, but I think I think the thing I noticed. Mainly because I'm just kind of... Ooh, I think I did find my old peel out. Yeah, for the most part, I'm all peeled out. Wow. I got some sentences you could tell from my previous videos. And I kind of peeled out. Again, I sun is good for you. And then for the most... I don't know if you can... I don't know. Uh, this might be... But you can kind of see where I'm, I'm still pasty white a little bit. In certain places. Yeah, there we go. That's a pretty good demonstration of that. Before I got some sun while fishing in the, at the beach... Yeah, that's all the paciness, pacey whiteness of me. Everything else is a fairly good tan. But again, I'm not a WWE superstar where I have to go around wearing snakeskin Speedos. But yeah, I, I digress. 
Vanderbrook should wear nothing but state snakeskin speedos. What am I saying? Wait a second. Um, yeah. Vanderbrook has to learn to tan better or tan more evenly. That and or pull her pantyhose up on her. I think it was her right or it was was one of her hips. You could tell because like her legs were really dark, except for like around the hip area, when you could tell the pantyhose was down because it was she's pretty white though. And I just realized that the the front and top, like I guess this area of her and her arms. And her legs look tan, but her, those tan legs might be the pantyhose. But then I want to take a look at her outfit. When you get to the back, like the hips, and like areas that would be covered up with a, with a full body swimsuit. So I will give her credit for being a classy woman. Bravo, Dana Brooke. You are truly a household name. I watched some old, old um, Kevin Scampoli videos too, so I'm reminiscing. But yeah. She just has to tan more evenly. And again, if she was my girlfriend, I would have absolutely no problems having her in my backyard being naked. In fact, I'd probably tell her, bring the chair out to the front yard and be naked. And all my neighbors would be jealous of me. So I'd be, I'd be happy. But again, Dana Brooke, she is an amazingly beautiful woman, as is Shannon Baszler in her own right. I don't take anything away from them yet. Unlike Princess Kimberly... That fat, real fat all of a sudden. That's a whole other. I already went into the whole thing about that. Um, as far as this match goes, Shayna uh, goes right for Dana Brooke. Dana goes to a hand, hand springs, right to the clutch, tries for a pin. And there was no La Mahistra. Then she put on a vicious ankle lock. And then, like, Shayna, like, kneed her or something in the face. Got the pin. One, two, three. I'll tell you what. Not a bad match. Dana Brooke was a little pissed off. I don't know if she thought it was supposed to go longer or she's upset herself at her booking. Said, hey, let me get a few, few extra things in. Who knows? Saw a ham sandwich match. I can't complain about that match, really. Um, it is Dana Brooke a little bit. She has improved much. And again, Shayna Baser said, hey, Hobo Tom, I need you to take me to this movie. Yes, ma'am. Hobo Tom, my name. But yeah, <laughs> Dana Brooke shows up to my shoe store and asks where to go fishing. Um, in search of another job because I'm taking Dana Brooke fishing. And I'll probably ask if I can pick her up and caveman carry her out of the store. Just to prove that that's my last day at work. Oh, that was a good chuckle. Then we had a Charlotte promo. Meh. Someone did mention that, that her nose looks a little bit towards the right. I don't know if that's from the whole Nia Jax thing. Who knows? It could just be the angle. It could be like weird shadows. Charlotte was never the... She was never the prettiest. For whatever reason. Charlotte's one of those people... Or the makeup doesn't make her look as pretty as she naturally is. Unlike, I think, Dana Brooke. <sighs> Shayna Baszler looks absolutely gorgeous when you see her without makeup. When I saw her without makeup here for an NXT show, I'm like, holy crap, she's hot. Dana Brooke, I think if, like, when she has, like, plastic face from way too much makeup, she doesn't look as nice, but I, I think Dana Brooke on natural probably looks absolutely amazing. And Becky Lynch, when she gets all pasted up, looks like a, a fake phony Barbie doll. A, 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 not even a Barbie doll, but I, I don't know, a Lori doll. Like the, the ripoff Barbie, whatever a ripoff Barbie doll is. Um, I have other statements about it. Becky Lynch later too, but I'll get to those. Charlotte Flair again. I don't think makeup's I don't think makeup helps. But that's my opinion. A very beautiful woman. Very happy for Andrade. Hey. Um, then we had Riddle taking on Omos. 
Um, yeah, Riddle, he tries to get into the head of AJ Styles. AJ Styles say, listen, to start this match, I want to get this thing over with. I want to get out of here. And, and Riddle's like, okay, Randy, come on, come out wherever you are. I hear voices in my head. And it is like, ref, if I go over there by the announce table, we just start this match. AJ Styles is the best. I don't think he could be faced by anything. A tear in his trunks. The antics of the audience. Oh, shut up. I don't want to hear about it. Ra- Ra- Randy Orton's not coming out. Yeah, they all start, the whole audience starts shouting RKO. And he's like, he's, he's not showing up. Great. AJ Styles is without a crowd or with a crowd, one of the best workers there. Um, Omos Lurie just like smacks Riddle around, picks Riddle up, and what goes up must go down. That must go down hard. Uh, then it is like, na 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 na. We're not done yet. You know, you know that roundhouse kick you, you, you talked to me about? Did you do that roundhouse kick thing? Yeah. Omos roundhouse kicks Riddle, collapses. And you're like, yeah, sh- show that on replay. Oh, that looks so pretty. You show that on replay again. You can tell, like, AJ was probably told to solve for some time. Again, AJ's so good. It's like, he's like, you know what? Do the... You do the CSB. The choke slam bomb. Yep. Up where it went. Down where it went. He's like, no, you know you can put his foot on him. That was, that was so good. AJ's so good. And then, and then, of course, after Riddle lost, AJ's going to think, okay, Randy, come up, come up, wherever you are. Omos, go, Omos goes to the outside. Randy Orton comes out of, like, nowhere. I mean, he's teleports in the ring. RKO's! AJ Styles, crowd goes great. Bonkers. That was, again, solid match. You know what? For Omos and all the interaction with AJ Styles, AJ Styles just elevates everything. That, I was just in a good mood. Cheeseburger match. I know people are going to argue me about with that that match is terrible. It was just entertaining, though, and that, that's all wrestling is, if you're thoroughly entertained. And I was, and it seemed legitimate to watch Omos, a big guy, run us, kick a little guy. Yeah, a little guy should go down, and he should go down in a freaking heap. Again, Omos should not have 15-minute matches. Three to five-minute squash matches, I'm good with that. Um, Bobby Lashley came out and talked a little bit. Then we had Jeff Hardy versus Austin Theory. And remember Austin Theory last last week, I think. Was on SmackDown. I don't know. Good. Uh, let me get a selfie with a zero Jeff Hardy. A selfie with him standing up. Then he knocked Jeff Hardy out. Got a selfie with Jeff Hardy down. Uh, for the most part, Hardy's not happy about this. Takes it right to Austin Theory. Theory does a roll roll through roll through drop I don't know, roll through drop kick. That was amazing to watch. Um, then the loser locker room shows up. That was unnecessary. Again, kind of distracts everyone. Hardy hits a combo. Um, there's a twist of fate again. Austin Theory is all distracted. He's like, why the hell are these people running around here? Why is this guy parkouring over me? Makes no sense to him. He, he, he's used to just being jumped. <laughs> he's used to being jumped in the NXT parking lot. And being kidnapped and, and, and stuck in stuff in people's trunks. Oh. So yeah, um, the, the ring is his safe, it's his normal safe spot. But yeah, then um, Hardy has combo, twist of fate. However, he missed a swanton bomb. Uh, Austin Theory rolled him up, grabbed the pants. Win by Austin Theory. He cheated to win. It was good. Jeff Hardy doesn't look absolutely terrible. This way, Hardy doesn't look absolutely terrible. You know, a solid cheeseburger match. Bianca Belair talks. I think I made a comment. Oh, no, it was during the match. I'll get to that, because that was just bad. Um, where am I now? Oh yeah, Jinder Mahal versus Kofi Kingston. This was actually pretty good. Um, Jinder kind of classic, classic start. Again, headlock. 
very basic stuff. Kofi had a hurricanrana, the trust fall on him. Um, Kofi, I don't know. This is what this is what I think took away from the match. Looks like Kofi either missed the SOS or Jinder wasn't going along with the SOS, thinking that he was supposed to counter it. But it looked like Kofi like just DDT'd himself. That was not pretty. And then he and then it took him a couple minutes because he rolled to the outside and he's just like Ugh. he he didn't look all there. Jinder Mahal got him back in. That, that was good. He did that gut buster. Oh, he picks him up on his shoulders, throws him up, falls down, brings the knees up. Ouch! If you don't hit that right, you're, you're breaking your ribs somewhere. Probably your knees hurt, too. And your back. Probably your hip bone. Everything hurts in pro wrestling. But, yeah. Um, Kofi hits the boom drop. However, Jinder Mahal comes back, hits the Colossus. Jinder Mahal is going on to the King of the Ring. Not a bad match. Honestly, I wanted to see the Kofi versus Xavier Woods. They were kind of trying to tease that throughout the show. I'm like, eh, they're being really evasive about that. That's a great tease, but that's not happening. Overall, a ham sandwich. Again, seeing that, that, that SOS into that weird self-DDT just looked ugly. It's all a ham sandwich match, though. This was just a big smudge. We had Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks taking on Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Four people that don't necessarily like each other. Um, Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, they start to bicker about who's going to start first. Before I say anything, one, point one, Charlotte Flair looks absolutely checked out of WWE. I know it's her character, but her mannerisms in the past couple matches, mainly with Nia Jax and any other kind of lower opponent, actually any opponent, she's not a step off, but she's not crisp looking, if that makes sense. She looks like she's going through the motions, and Charlotte Flair has been in the business long enough, and to be fair, she has a tutelage long enough. I mean, she has... Woo, Ric Flair. And I'm sure if she really had to ask for help, there's Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson, I'm sure would help. Um, she will probably talk to Paul Ellering. Again, Rachel Ellering would be a great workout partner for her. Uh, again, Tully Blanchard, Tessa Blanchard. So she has at least five people that I can think of that would actually really help her out. She just looks... I think someone... Someone said she looks like she's drunk in the ring. I said she was doing some oh stuff in the stuff before. Someone said, yeah, most of the WWE wrestlers do that <sighs> stuff before. But Charlotte Fuller just looks especially checked out. That's observation number one. Charlotte Flair ding, checked out. Observation number two. Becky Lynch, for just having given birth, and I know the physiology, her tits got smaller. I don't even know how to say it than that. Like, during pregnancy, a woman's breast size normally goes up because milk goes in there. And I know people are going to say, but there's, yeah, I know there are pills women can take. Where it, it dries up stuff there. But still, initially, they get larger, milkier. Um, there are physiological changes. Nipple darkens. I, I won't get into to all the stuff. I don't want someone saying, oh, well, it doesn't happen to all women. <laughs> no, it happens to the majority, on average, it happens to, to the vast majority of women. But yeah, Becky Lynch got, and this is this is the part that's not natural. And I know she wears, of course, she has a, she has CrossFit. I'm sure she has a tight outfit, amazingly tight outfit. Um, I think when I when I saw her tummy, like her tummy had like zero stretch marks on it, and I know there's creams, all kinds of stuff people you can do. 
but Becky Lynch actually looks smaller and more. She, honestly, I want to even say say more in shape because she always looked in shape for a, uh, a female wrestler. She just looks smaller though. Mainly her 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 chest got smaller. Yeah, her breasts got smaller. Her mammary glands decreased. After having a kid, that's normally like yeah, that's weird. It's just weird, and I, I think one of them, I think Ritz said, or even goes to Roddy Piper, who yeah, who's already in the Tenda Beach Bum Fight League. I have to make tra la, -la eventually. Yeah, this all CrossFit stuff. Again, my personal taste, I like the Dana Brooke body type, where... And I know someone's going to find offense to this. But, but she looks softer though. She's not a she's not a hard body. I'm not seeing bones or skeletal features. Zelina Vega freaks me out. Mainly because I can see skeletal features. Same thing with Carmella. Except for Carmella looks fake up top. And way too small on the bottom. You can see like distinct pelvic features. Um, Sasha Banks like super waxes. Because the only thing she's covering up is literally her mom's region. I guess that's third observation. Sasha Banks must know a great waxer. Because I'll tell you what, there's nothing down there. Becky Lynch is probably everything down there, which I'm fine with. Dana Brooke? I'll say she just trims. Where it's, it's neat. It's a... <laughs> It's the land, it's either the landing strip or the treasure path. I'll say that. Bianca Belair, I don't know. Probably decent down there. It trims. Charlotte Flurry goes like, like all wax too, but doesn't show like. She doesn't just cover up her mons. She's she's more covered up at least. Yeah, um, well, my three observations. Charlotte Flair's checked out. Becky, Lin Becky Lynch's breast got smaller. And Sasha Bank super shaves or s super waxes. Or I guess the Telly Savalas. There's an old, there's, there's a movie rushing for you folks. Um, starts off, uh, again, Bianca and Sasha, they, they fight to see who goes in there. Becky Lynch eventually shoves... Um, Bianca into Sasha into the corner. Uh, Bianca gets shoved into Charlotte. Charlotte knees Becky. They all fight each other outside the ring. Adam Pearson, boo Sonya Deville, boo, boo Sonya Deville for getting involved. Um, gets involved and says, "No, you four ladies will have this match. I don't care what. Figure it out yourselves." Be damp. He told he told them to be professionals. As, as Sanjay Dot like jumped on the one, and then it, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's Charlotte just brings him down, but I'll tell you what. There was a there was a scrum in Bianca Belair. She got all. Of Sasha's cooch. She just laid, grabbed her vagina. It was so weird. I'm like, whoa, where is, uh, it wasn't even, I don't know, it wasn't even, she just like grabbed her. <laughs> that was hilarious. And then I think, I think, <laughs> she grabbed Charlotte Floyd there too. Or Charlotte Floyd then grabbed her there. Or Sasha Banks, I think, grabbed her there. Like, whoa, they're just grabbing each other there. It's like, it's like a no-go zone on most men. And actually, I learned it. I learned it. <laughs> a friend taught me a not-so-savory part of wrestling. <sighs> you always know when the thumbtacks come out. Cause that's the only time men will actually wear a cup underneath their trunks. And again, 
you do not want to be have a thumbtack go in there by accident. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the super hard plastic kind that like catchers and goalies wear. But if it's like kind of like the soft, I say relatively soft foam version cup. Yeah. That's when you know it's going to be a hardcore match and they just want to protect stuff down there. That makes sense. So yeah, this was just like a smudge and it's just a fight. It was a drag. Yeah, there was they tried some wrestling moves. The heels fight each other. Sasha launched gets launches into everyone. They go forward to roll up and this this uh, can of soup. Then we had Dewdrop taking on Natalia. Um, Natalia just like slapped Dewdrop a lot. Tried to stretch on the abdominal lock. I'm trying to think, do drop one. I'm trying to remember how she won now. Why do I don't wanna... no do drop one? Then she hit the big splash and like that was it. Like that was like terrible. <laughs> Not given a lot to work with. Can a suit match. And I'll tell you what, for, for what cup size Becky Lynch lost, Natalia put on cup sizes. So she took the breast of Becky Lynch. So Becky Lynch has less, and she added that to her. If, if anyone, there's a great scene in Full Metal Jacket. I think it's Full Metal Jacket. Is it Full Metal Jacket? Or Boys of Company, maybe Boys of Company C. No, I think it was Full Metal Jacket. Private, say, you listen to me, Private Snowball, you will lose weight. And you, Private Texas person, you will put on weight. And if you do not do that, I will cut the fat off of Snowball and feed you Private Snowball's fat. I want to say it was, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say that was, um, Either Full Metal Jacket or Boys of Company C. Only because I can hear um, a gunny saying it, though. I will cut the fat off you and feed it to you so that you that lose the weight and you put on the weight. And he said in his, his, he said in his gunnery sergeant voice, Well, I don't care. You're not going to understand what I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was still, those are still fun to watch. Um, then those and uh, Nikki and Ray were backstage. They're like best friends. I think one comment was, who, is, who really does have the better? Again, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley looks so gorgeous without all the makeup. You put that makeup on her and she looks terrible. Nikki Cross just needs a new outfit. I refuse to call her Nikki, Nikki A-S-H. She's Nikki Glenn Cross. And she's always cute. Chinese Moon does just say on the truck, on, on one of the um, stage trucks, oh, oh. Censoring myself, I'm like, oh, he's reverting back to Johnny Mundo, baby. One day. Ali and, and Mansoor, they fight it out. And that leads us to our main event. Where we have Drew McIntyre and Biggie take on the Usos. Uh, it was great. Good couple matches. They isolate, uh, I think, Jay Uso into the corner. I'll call it the Unicorn and the Sheep Stomp. Because they, they don't have unicorns in Scotland. They have sheep. Lots of sheep. Well, we don't have unicorns. We have sheep. And cattle. And we drink. Oh, that's Australian, though. They have, she they have, they have sheep in Australia, too. But yeah, it's the unicorn, the sheep stomp. Um, Drew and Biggie. For the most part, they're working well. The Usos then isolate Biggie in their corner. <laughs> or no, they, uh, yeah, they isolate Biggie in the corner. And do their own version of the unicorn stomp. I like move thieves. When it tells a story, that's really good. Uh, then the Simone headbutt came into play. Oh, Simone headbutt's best headbutt ever. Biggie then. Again, he, he's there. He gets stomped. Stomp. More stomp. Uh, the Usos, they do great double team off, off the ropes. 
Drew eventually does get the hot tag in. Um, however, there was no count on because Biggie tagged himself in. Then we have ourselves a super kick party! Um, Biggie and Drew go outside of the ring. They start shoving each other. Um, they don't realize that the ref says, 10! 10! 10 count! Uh, Usos win. Uh, Drew got busted open the hard way. And the hard way, too, because he, he had the Easter egg on his head. And it's like, oh, he took a bump the hard way. He might not be too happy about that. That's probably why they just start. Like, if I'm not winning, if I got this bump, we're going to go at it. He got busted open. So that was pretty good to see the Usos. Again, they use the table, throw both of them over the table. Maybe he took too hard of a bump, who knows. Um, it's hard to take, it's hard to blame the guy you're working with about getting thrown in the barricade because kind of, you kind of launch yourself into the barricade. I think it was, was the steel steps. Because Biggie ate the steel steps, I think. I think it was, was when Biggie and Drew were going at each other. Who knows? There's a count of victory. The Usos win. Drew and Big E still look strong. The Usos look good as usual. They win. They'll make the Tribal Chief happy. And I'll tell you what. That was a good cheeseburger match. And besides the one women's match with Dewdrop. Mainly just because it was short. And of course anything with Charlotte Flair just like goes to shit nowadays. Um, I'll tell you what, it was, I thought it was a good show. This Raw, solid cheeseburger Raw. And let's see if I can do this in under two minutes. Um, so this week's schedule, I'm closing a lot. Um, I'm closing tomorrow, so there's going to be no NXT, no NXT Live tomorrow. I'll probably, hopefully have this video up sometime tomorrow. I honestly can't tell you when exactly because it's, well, rather early right now. Wednesday, I'll be doing a typical AEW uh, live stream review. Thursday, no impact. I don't even want to hear about that. Um, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about Bound for Glory all the time. I'm um, still a week away, so yeah, whatever. And there's nothing great coming out of that knockouts thing. Um, everything, for the most part, stayed kind of status quo. Friday, I will be doing my double show. I'll be doing uh, SmackDown first, my Red Wine and Pizza SmackDown. Followed up by the AEW Rampage. No wrestling on Saturday. Clear and free. No wrestling on Sunday. Clear and free. And hopefully I go to work tomorrow. My boss has a schedule. And I have to figure out stuff tomorrow. So let's see if I have my schedule. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe again. If you know what movies I'm referencing, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want to correct me and say it was another war movie, I don't think it was. Those are the two that stand out. I don't think it was Jarhead. That seemed too recent. Wasn't the Hurt Locker. Again, that's too recent. I, I, it's either the Boys of Company C or Full Metal Jacket. Only two things I can, only two movies that I can.